As you know, I'm wondering whether it would be practical to use a windmill to directly heat water for the house. So, not using electricity, but directly heating up the water using friction. There are lots of ways of heating water with friction. You can simply stir it with a wooden spoon or a whisk. You could use a paddle to move more of the water around. And if you put baffles in the way, then you'd heat it quicker. You could use a cylinder inside another cylinder with water in between, and that would work. Or push water through small holes. The friction on the sides of the holes would heat the water. But there's enough friction in moving water to change kinetic energy into heat energy. We know all that's possible, but how practical is it? You see, you can bring water to boiling point simply by whisking it, but you need to whisk it very, very fast and for a long time. Now, I was hoping to avoid high speed anything on my windmill, less wear and tear and worry and danger. So is there another way to achieve the same thing? How could a spinning windmill shaft best be used to create the friction in the water? And how could you design something in advance to test that without wasting lots of money if it doesn't work? Those were the questions I set out to answer before I got a horrible cold. Well, for a start, instead of just paddling water very quickly, you could increase the friction greatly by employing metal directly on metal and then you could run the whole thing at a much slower speed. Metal plates sliding past each other under water would do the job, surely. I mean, that's pretty obvious. But how many metal plates and how fast and how big? That was the challenge. And I came up with this experiment that taught me a lot and might interest you too. I used a paint tin and some offcuts of steel and the pillar drill. We've been painting our house and so I had a few of these. I screwed a couple of wooden bars inside using rubber o-rings to keep it waterproof. And then screwed the whole thing to a base using screws that already have a rubber washer. And then I welded three lengths of rebar together to give me the drive shaft. And that was a mistake, but I didn't know that yet. This drive shaft will go into the pillar drill and the pillar drill represents a vertical shaft that could be driven by the windmill. You just have to imagine that bit. And then I drew these shapes on the computer and I cut them out with my marvelous plasma cutter which seems to be working better these days, probably because the weather has improved a lot and there's less moisture in the air. The big shape just drops into the pot and is held steady by the wooden bars. But the small one has, um, has a long hole in it and that's to accommodate the drive shaft, which should drive it round and round. In fact, I decided the hole was a little big on the first one, so I redrew them for the rest. And I cut four large plates and three small plates that go in between like a big multi-layered sandwich. Now, the advantage of this design is that each plate is loose in a vertical direction so it can fall as far as is needed. I had spent a while thinking about shelves to hold them up but that was just silly. And this way I can easily add more plates without having to rebuild everything and it's completely scalable. Theoretically, you could have as many plates as you like and any size you like. So anyway, I set it up in the drill and changed the gears to the lowest speed and turned it on. Certainly, there was plenty of friction in there. 
So I clamped down the base, changed up the gear, so now it's running around 500 RPM, something like that, and put some water in. The water was quickly warmed up without doing anything because the plates were still warm from being cut and cleaned. 24.6 centigrade. And I turned it on. I mean, what could go wrong? Well, not a lot. The water stayed in the pot mostly. It did start leaking a little from the base and it quickly became obvious that the rebar was the problem. The ridges on it kept trying to lift and jam the plates and that's what caused all the movement and that's what caused the leak. The plates should have just been spinning round and round but they weren't. Also the water wasn't heating very fast. I mean it was warming but too slowly for me and no time to hang around for all that. So I made some more plates, two of each sort. After all, that's what this experiment was really designed for, ease of adaptation. Now this time we started with the water at 18.7 degrees centigrade. More wobbling. Now of course, in the real thing, I wouldn't be using a paint tin, okay? <laughs> I'd need an insulated container that's a bit more solid with a heat exchanger to take the heat and store it somewhere else. What's the temperature now, Tim? Well, it's a bit awkward because there's only one place the thermometer could go that won't get it all mangled up. But it was rising slowly. 20.7 20.8 20.9 21 slowly but surely and how much would it rise in five minutes well that was the plan to leave it running for five minutes but the leak was getting worse all the time and the water level was going down so i stopped the experiment after four minutes by which time the temperature had risen to 31 degrees so more than 12 degrees in four minutes, not too bad, I'm thinking. Remembering that it isn't just the water that's being heated, it's all that steel too, about two litres of water and steel combined. Not to mention the paint tin and the air around the paint tin. As far as I can see, the only problem is the rebar is causing too much vibration and jamming. And you can see how uneven the wearing is on the plates. So I went and eventually I found some smooth round bar and made a new drive shaft and that made all the difference. Much less vibration and leaking. In fact, I think the whole thing works quite well, which is a good thing. Now, to turn this experimental contraption into a useful working machine that could actually heat a house, I would, of course, use bearings, top and bottom, and a stronger container, and as I say, insulated all around with a heat exchanger to move the heat to a storage tank, and then connect it to a big windmill and stand back. But look, you see, that's not such a mad proposition, is it? It would work. How well it works depends on how much power the windmill delivers, obviously. If it was powerful enough, then of course you could have a much bigger container with bigger plates churning away day and night. It could heat up lots of water. You could put oil in there instead of water and that would save evaporation and rusting. If the paint tin was insulated completely, then this pot would reach 100 degrees and be boiling in about 20 minutes or so but with no insulation at all it might not get past 60 degrees it was easy to get it from 20 to 30 because the surrounding air wasn't much colder but after that it gets harder and harder so i stopped the experiment when the water reached 40 degrees which 
by the way, is easily hot enough to heat a house if you have enough of it. So the only downside that I can see is the plates actually wearing away, which they surely would eventually, but that could be over weeks or months or years. It's hard to know just from this experiment. So it may not be much of a problem, I just don't know. Insulation could be a bigger problem though. The higher the temperature, the better the insulation has to be. It might be easier and cheaper to heat a few tons of water that's stored at 30 degrees than half a ton heated to 100. Even in this low temperature workshop experiment, heat radiation would become a bigger and bigger problem. The heat losses would rise as the temperature of the water rises and eventually you'd lose the same amount of energy as you put in so the water would stop getting hotter. So I think that experiment was worth doing and the windmill project takes a tiny step forward.